Hey, it's Greg here with MaritimeGarden.com. I'm gonna to throw together some lunch for myself. And today I'm gonna to show you how to make what I call a weekday Caesar salad. So Caesar salad is something that we tend to go to order in restaurants. Or if you make it at home, you buy something called Caesar salad dressing and you put it on some romaine lettuce, you know, that sort of thing. I'm gonna show you how to kind of make it from scratch. Um, because to me, this is it's been my kid's favorite salad. If you've got kids and you're trying to get them into eating salad, how can you go wrong with um, adding bread and bacon to the lettuce, right? <laughs> it just amps the whole thing up. So let's, uh, let's get started here and get everything going. So uh, first things first, bacon and croutons. So I've got basically a strip and a half of bacon here on a plate. I'm going to stick that in the microwave for about, oh, like a minute and a half. See how that goes. And I'm going to use one slice of bread here because I'm, I'm going to eat this whole salad myself for lunch. But if I was making this for um, like supper as a side dish for four, I, I might put two slices of bread. Um, so this is not the traditional way of making croutons is you, you cut the thing up in cubes, you put it in a bowl, you toss it with some oil and pepper and salt and stuff like that, and you bake it in the oven. This is quickie crouton. So you stick this in a toaster on a lower setting, not the lowest setting, but the setting next to the lowest setting. For me, for my toaster, that's the two setting. Okay, so we got our bacon going, we got our croutons going. Now we can throw together a sauce. All right, so uh, Caesar salad dressing is basically a mayonnaise with garlic and fishiness and lemon. Um, that's basically what it is. And if you look at recipes for how to make Caesar salad dressing, there's a ridiculous amount of ingredients going into them. It's because you're starting with an egg and you're making a kind of mayonnaise. You can just short circuit or shortcut all of that by just starting with mayonnaise. This is my homemade mayonnaise. Um, so if you want to learn how to do that, I'll put a link, um, you know, in the corner of the screen at the end of this video on how to make mayonnaise from scratch. Um, if you're buying using store-bought mayonnaise, it it might need a little more zip. So when you're doing this. When you're doing this, just add a little Dijon mustard. You don't have to do this. I'm just saying if you want to get the flavors just right, right? Um, when I make homemade mayonnaise, I add a, a teaspoon of Dijon mustard per cup of homemade mayonnaise. I make a cup of mayonnaise maybe once every, once every month, once every two weeks, depending on how often I'm using it. My mayonnaise is very easy to make if you've got a hand blender, and I got a video on how to do that. Um, anyway, so here I've got some mayonnaise. I got uh, Clove of garlic. And it's going to take the shell off of that. Toast is popped. It's going to leave it there in the toast for a couple seconds. All right. So take the garlic and uh, just bash it as best you can. What you need is minced garlic. All right. And these are really big garlic. If you're using store bought garlic, you might need to use two of them. Let me check that bacon because it's just going to keep beeping. Uh, so I put it in for a minute and a half. Uh, that's done enough for me. I like my bacon a bit soft. So that's, that's fine. That's good. The bacon's done. All right. So I'm going to take this garlic and just mince it up as best I can on the board. If you don't know this technique, it's pretty easy. You just hold the knife down here and go up and down. Right. One of my things is that I think a lot of people don't do cooking because if you look at the really popular stores, they sell all this pre-made stuff. And I think it's because people just don't have basic kitchen skills. And I think basic kitchen skills start with a knife skill. If you work in a restaurant, I mean, they don't buy pre-made food. Who would want to buy, who would go to a restaurant if all their food was pre-made food? They make things from scratch because it's better that way. It's fresh. Okay. And they do that by having staff trained food preparers that know how to use a knife. And you can learn how to do that if you just try. <laughs> okay. Um, so we got our garlic in here. I'm going to put about half a teaspoon of salt. I'm going to put about, oh, about a teaspoon of Worcestershire sauce. You know, this Caesar salad was uh, invented, it, 
Often we think, oh, this must have been, you know, Caesar, the emperor. This must have been Caesar's favorite salad. Or maybe Caesar Augustus' favorite salad. No, 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 no. It was invented, as far as we know, by a guy named Caesar who was an Italian immigrant working in a restaurant in Tijuana during Prohibition. The place was full of people. He, they were low on supplies, and he basically had very little uh, materials. He had to make some salads real quick, and he came up with this recipe just off the top of his head, which is amazing because it's a very popular salad. So a half a teaspoon of uh, salt, and I'll put in about a quarter teaspoon of pepper. All right, I'm gonna put in about a quarter of a lemon, okay, like, uh, which makes about a tablespoon of lemon juice. You can dial that up or dial that down, depending on how acidic you like things. All right, and now we add uh, about, a good heaping tablespoon, which is basically like two tablespoons of um, mayonnaise. Just leave a spoon right in there to use it for mixing. All right, and uh, one more thing. As you may not know it when you buy your Caesar salad dressing or when you order a Caesar salad uh, at a restaurant, but Caesar salad has anchovies in it. And that flavor, that great flavor that the one in the restaurant has that yours doesn't have, that is the result of anchovies, right? The fish, the flavor of all of that, um, umame, what they call flavor. And so the ideal thing is to put maybe four anchovies in when you're mixing up the dressing. But if you don't have anchovies, a good substitute is this stuff, okay? There's different brands of this. This is the one that's available at the store near where I live, but it's basically called fish sauce. Squid brand, I don't think it's actually made from squid. Um, but who knows, right? But anyway, um, this is something you can buy in uh, Asian grocery stores. Uh, it's central in a lot of uh, cooking in Asia. And uh, it basically is a good substitute for anchovies. Um, so, I mean, you wouldn't think... They basically take fish and salt them and ferment them and the juice comes out and it goes in this bottle and you put it on your food. And why you can add this to a salad without cooking it and be totally fine, I don't fully understand, but you can. So <laughs> I've done this many times. My whole family would be done <laughs> if this didn't work. I find about two teaspoonfuls is about right. So this is salty. I just only added a half a teaspoon of salt. Salty. Um, and I mean, it's just got this fishy smell. When I was growing up, you'd go to like a, a wharf where they, um, you know, where a fish factory is. You know, we had that the smell of dead, dried, rotten fish. That's what that smells like, but boy, it tastes good. <laughs> Not really selling it well, but it really does uh, a lot of good. All right, so it doesn't take much of that. You keep that in your fridge, it lasts forever. Okay, so I think we've put everything in there we're supposed to put in. So I'm just gonna mix that up. Okay. Now, I mean, the amount I've put in here is about the right amount for a, a family of four. I like to mix that all up so that all the flavors are in with the, with the sauce before I put the lettuce in. All right, now we got our, um, our bacon here. I'm just going to dice that up. Dice that up real fine. I mean, this is nothing th to throw together on a weekday. This is not a complicated thing to do. Okay, here we got our bacon. Get that in with the sauce too, so the, the sauce has a nice bacony flavor, right? So now they've got the, the sort of the anchovy, the fish taste, the bake. These are all strong flavors that really make things uh, enhance things. Okay, now last thing to do: our crouton. Now this is an essential step, and to me, this, this is how I do it. I don't know. I wouldn't say this is the safest thing to do in the world. Toaster oven's probably better, but basically you put about a teaspoon of oil on one side of it anyway. All right, you can rub it on the other side too. All right. It's good to put it on a plate and just rub it in like that. You're basically oiling that toast that's sort of cooked. And you just kind of throw that back in the toaster for the lowest setting the toaster has. For me, that's the, the one setting. Okay, so by virtue of doing that, on the one setting, I mean, you don't leave the room when you do this sort of thing, and 
I'm sure every safety recommendation in the world says, do not put toast in the toaster with butter or oil or anything on it because there's a risk of it catching on fire and burning your house down. Um, so what you should do is do this using a toaster oven or an actual oven. Um, so I'm not going to tell you what to do and don't listen to me because I'm just a guy cooking in my kitchen. I'm just showing you what I do. I'm not recommending you do anything. All right. But this is a very quick, easy way to take that toast and with that little bit of fat you've added to the toast, it becomes crouton like. And I figured this out one day when I was just whipping up lunch for my kids and I decided to make a Caesar salad and we had leftover toast from breakfast. I just stick it back in the toaster for the lowest setting. And I noticed it was just nice and crispy and kind of, kind of just right, right? And the reason you need, I mean, you could just throw the toast in as is, but the reason you add that oil, that fat to the bread, I'm just gonna leave that there for a second to sort of dry out. Um, the reason you want that oil there is because it makes the crouton a little bit waterproof so that when you put it, toss it in with the salad, it doesn't lose its crunch, right? If you just took dry toast and put it in a Caesar salad, um, because there's moisture in the lettuce and the, the, the sauce has moisture, it'll immediately absorb that moisture and the croutons will not maintain their crunchiness. They'll become soggy, just soggy bread. Who wants that, right? So that's why um, why you do that. And you, know, you notice that's come out of there now. That's fine. It's, it's nice and crispy and it's all, it's all good, right? This is ready to go into the salad. So this, this is ready. I'm just going to leave it here to sort of continue to um, uh, dry out. And now we got to get our lettuce ready. All right, so I washed this lettuce off and uh, the key to making a good Caesar salad is making sure the lettuce is dried off. If it's all wet, it's like I've washed this and I've, I've dried it out a little bit, but it's not perfectly dry. And all that moisture will make the salad too wet, right? It just, just the texture won't be right. So you just lay it on a cloth, right? Roll it up, right? And I'm going to take this out on my deck, but you just, I bend it over like this and I just kind of almost like I'm swinging an ax, right? I'll go like, I, <laughs> I grab it like I've got it folded over. So I grab it at the bottoms and I just go like this and all kinds of water will come out through the cloth and that will dry out the lettuce. So let me go do that. It's raining outside. I can't film that part, but uh, let me just go do that really quickly. There we go. So I find about like ten, doing that like you're swinging an axe. Do about 10 of those and I find it does a good job. Notice I'm leaving, it's keeping this bread out. I put that in last. Right, you put that in right before serving. Okay, so I've got most of the moisture out of this uh, lettuce here. Okay, so I'm just going to cut this up. Okay, some people cut the lettuce up in big pieces. I kind of like it, I don't know, like half inch. And I actually cut it down the center, right? But I think this is the daunting part for people. Just the simple meal prep, the, the basic knife scales and just sort of getting in there with your hands using a big chef's knife like this, which seems dangerous, but it's actually the safest knife you can use. Okay. And you can pick stuff up with it too, right? All right, so we've got our lettuce in there. I'll toss that. Two spoons. I could add more lettuce to the salad. This is a, a little bit more sauce than the salad needs, but I'm just making it for me. But I'm showing you the proportions you'd use for like a full dish um, if you were entertaining guests, right? And, but even, even so, this crouton will take up some of that moisture. And again, if I was making this for a family meal, I'd add two of these, but I don't, and this is just for me for lunch, so I'm, I'll be full when I have this. So I've cut those in about, you know, half inch cubes. All right, that's good. And we just toss that up. Now, I mean, if you're, um, 
uh, luckier than me and you can have dairy, this is a great time to add some Romano cheese or some Parmesan cheese, that sort of thing. That's all up to you. Uh, and of course, you could conceivably throw anything else in there if you want. You can throw mushrooms in there or whatever. Right? This is just the, the classic recipe as I understand it. All right, so let's throw that on a plate just so you can see what we're working with here. Nice salad. Again, if I wasn't one of these poor lactose intolerant suckers, I'd be adding some Parmesan cheese to this right now. Anyway, that's, that's nice, right? Have a look at that. How's that look? <laughs> All right. So that didn't take long to do. It, just, it takes even less time when you're not, you know, shooting a video and explaining it to people, but it's not hard to do, right? And let's give her a taste. The croutons feel crunchy. Hmm. You got the zip of the lemon, that um, savoriness of the bacon. The lettuce is crunchy. Um, you don't taste the fish sauce, the anchovy, whatever you're using. You really don't. But if it's not there, you notice it's missing. Okay, that's the best way I can put this. This salad does not have a fishy, if you smell fish sauce or anchovies, you have an extremely fishy smell. But I don't know, I don't know why this works, but in here, this does not have a fishy taste at all. It just tastes really, really good. <laughs> right? So that's a quick way to throw together a Caesar salad on a weekday, just using stuff around the house without having to make a big production without having to make that Caesar salad dressing from scratch. It was a bit of a complicated affair just by using the shortcut. Little uh, fish sauce mayonnaise, right? Instead of starting with a raw egg and going from there. It's just way faster, way easier. And it achieves the same effects. So you're basically, you're taking out the most labor intensive part of making a Caesar salad is making that sauce from scratch. Um, and if you buy a Caesar salad dressing, it never tastes like this because I've put a fresh lemon in there, right? And you just get that freshness, right? So you get the, the benefit of a fresh Caesar salad dressing, um, but much more quick to put together than the conventional way of putting together a Caesar salad dressing. All right, so anyway, that's how I do it. I hope you found that interesting. If you did, please like, share, subscribe. I got all the instructions for how to put this together on my Substack page, maritimegardening.substack.com directions, the ingredients, uh, you know, little little thoughts on the side, <laughs> and things like that as well. Uh, if you want more detail, if you want a, a reference for making this, instead of having to watch my video every time you make it, just uh, check that out. And that article is free, right? You don't have to subscribe. You don't have to be a paid subscriber to see that recipe, although that would be great. Anyway, I hope you found that interesting. If you did, please like, share, subscribe. Until next time, have fun in your garden. Have fun in your kitchen. Thanks for watching. <laughs>